you say that, but not everyone gets the best deal. Like, what if I give you a lollipop? Then I gave you our best lollipop. The real e Leasy. You know what I'm talking about? Good morning. Good afternoon. What's going on with my people, man? Um, just going to provide a little bit of commentary or analysis, excuse me, on the Lakers. Uh, first game with Coach Fisdale uh, taking over the helm. I know there's a lot of speculation that, um, and there's been a lot of rumors and chatter, you know what I'm saying, around social media and, you know, YouTube and uh, even on, you know, ESPN and Fox Sports and stuff that Frank Vocal is in danger of losing his job. Okay, so the Lakers played, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, their first game with Coach Fisdale, you know what I'm saying, leading the charge. Um, and pretty much the same results. And, and Trevor Ariza came back. Made his only shot he took, which was a three-pointer. But was still getting abused on defense. He was still They were still going at him. So everybody said, oh, what we're going to look like? We're going to tre Trevor. I think Frank Vogel came out and said Trevor Reza is an intricate part, and he's going to help, you know what I'm saying, short things up on the defensive end and all this other stuff. It's just the way that the Lakers roster is designed. They're not good because they don't have an identity. They don't know whether they're a defensive team, a transition team, uh, a half court team, like, you know what I'm saying? A, a grind it out team. You know what I'm saying? They don't know whether they're a three point shooting team or running through the post or like, you know what I'm saying? They just don't have an identity. And it's hard to just put a whole bunch of all star and all Hall of Fame, all pro players together and expect to get these rapid results. You get what I'm saying? It's They have to go through these growing pains. So maybe they're a year away. Like, you know what I'm saying? They have to learn how to play with each other. They have to build chemistry and camaraderie. And they just don't have enough time to do that with everything that's going on or surrounded um, with our health and safety protocols, injuries. It's like, I don't see them. And it, I'm not hating. I'm just keeping it 100. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can see this. You feel me? Is Everybody has a different perception um, based off of um, the facts based off of certain information that's out based off of um, what you want to believe because you might have a bias because it's your favorite team, which has some of your favorite players of all time on that team. And you really want to say that, you know, a certain team oh, we're the best team. We got this player. We got that. We way better. Just wait until we get, just wait until we, you know what I'm saying? We're going to be all right in the end. They just don't have a player personnel. Everybody, they're one of the oldest teams in the NBA. The NBA is all about young, athletic talent right now. If you're older and you really didn't have a a, a, pick, a particular thing that you did well, like right now, the game is predicated on shooting. It's not a big man's league. Even Joel Embiid, who can post up and pretty much do anything he wants to in the paint, shoots jump shots, fadeaways, like, you know what I'm saying, three-pointers, pull-up jumpers. Anthony Davis, pull-up jumpers, three-pointers, fadeaways. Like, you know what I'm saying? Look at Jokic. He can score anytime he wants to in the paint. But what does he do? He shoots one-legged step-back threes and fadeaway. He's in. You know what I'm saying? So, back in the day, you really didn't have our big man shooting. Excuse me. You really didn't have our big man shooting a whole bunch of threes. You feel me? It just wasn't a whole bunch of threes being shot. David Robinson, Akeem Olajuwon. If anything, they would shoot a mid-range jumper. Patrick Ewing. But for the most part, they were back to the basket centers. You know what I'm saying? So you really don't have... The Lakers really don't have that. They have big men that want to shoot threes and do all this other stuff when they can just be dominant in the paint. Carmelo, they use, Carmelo is older, so I'm going to tell you, Carmelo is not somebody who's going to get into an up-and-down game. He's going to get winded and tired. He doesn't have the legs for that. Carmelo game is more suited on give him the ball 15 feet and beyond. Or no, I mean 23 feet and in and let him go to work to where he doesn't really have to exert so much energy with ball handling and everything to get his shot off. But just by putting him in a corner, telling him to catch and shoot, that's hard for any player to who's a great scorer to just change their game up and become one one-dimensional. Carmelo Anthony is not a catch-and-shoot 
three-point artist. He's just not. Carmelo is a rhythm three-point shooter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Carmelo, if you give it to him and he can spot up or he can get like a little hesitation and get into his rhythm and then pull up, that's when he's most effective with his game. But now teams are asking him to sit over there, sit in the corner, do this, do that. And then they're expecting him to play defense too? No, you have to help Carmelo Anthony on the defensive end. You know what I'm saying? So he can give you that and sustain a high level of productivity on the offensive end. Come on, man. Just think about it. Just look at the games when Carmelo was most effective, how he was used. And then look at the games when he's not most effective and he you know, he doesn't have it going. You know what I'm saying? His jump shots are long or they're short because he doesn't have the legs. Just think about that. Just one time. Just We need to keep it 100, man, and have an IQ for this shit. You get what I'm saying? The Lakers are not a good team. And then they just added another score. And Isaiah Thomas, shout out to Isaiah Thomas. He's balling and doing his thing, but he's a liability on defense. You know what I'm saying? And then they have Rondo on the court. It's I don't understand. See, Rondo really doesn't do anything for you. You get what I'm saying? So it's difficult. It's difficult to get a lot of productivity because you're expecting Rondo to do what? He's not really a great defender. What is he going to run the offense? But if you're running the offense, all he's doing is coming down and just passing it to LeBron. You know what I'm saying? For LeBron to go one on one, it's it's they not they're not a very good team and they're not coached well. You know what I'm saying? I think if they had a different, if there was a different dynamic, then I think um, that they'll be okay. But. It, they need a little bit more structure. And with LeBron James' teams, other than Miami, which he didn't like. See, LeBron doesn't like structure. He wants to be able to be the Tom Brady and the Peyton Manning and the quarterback of the team and call his own sets and do audibles and shit. You know what I'm saying? See, that's what LeBron, his whole career has been that. And that's not hating. That's just a fact. You know what I'm saying? He really takes away from everyone else's abilities, but he couldn't take away from a Dwayne Wade's ability, a Ray Allen ability. He couldn't take away from a motherfucking Kyrie Irving ability because those are great players with one-on-one, -on -one, you know what I'm saying? Um, they have a, a different set of attributes to where they don't, they, they don't have to, you know, cater to LeBron. They can go get their own. You get what I'm saying? A lot of players on the Lakers right now cater to LeBron. Probably other than Westbrook. Westbrook can create, you know what I'm saying, his own too. But he's a little bit out of control in doing so. You know what I'm saying? So that's the one thing that's going to hurt the Lakers. See, when you look at the, the grand scheme of things in the long run, it's perfect for um, LeBron to go back to his hometown in Cleveland. They have a bunch of players who can get their own. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of players who's skilled and who can't fit around a talent like, you know, LeBron James. And I've been saying that from the gets. The Lakers don't have that talent. They really don't have no cap. I don't think anybody wants to go to the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? Because of the way that everything is handled behind the scenes from a business standpoint. Everyone sees that LeBron runs this organization. LeBron doesn't want certain players there. Get them out of here. Certain players that he wants there, bring them in. But he's only bringing in veteran players. Like no other superstars or players that's in their prime wants to go play with LeBron. That's the issue. Think about that. That's the issue right there. Nobody's going to go play. He don't. Why DeMar DeRozan could have went back home and went to go play for him? Kawhi Leonard could have went back home to go play for the Lakers with LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Paul George could have went to the Lakers to go play with LeBron. All of these players could have went to go play with LeBron. Bradley Bill could have went to the Lakers to go play with LeBron. Nobody wants to play with the guy. So that just tells me that nobody really respects him like that. You feel me? Nobody really wants to play with LeBron like that. I'm just saying. Think about that. I need people to keep this shit 100, man. Stop fucking capping for these weak ass niggas. I'm just saying. Lakers are garbage as fuck, man. And it's sad because I was a Laker fan. 
up until when they killed Kobe and they brought LeBron in, I already knew what was going on. I said, I can't ride. I'm not riding with a motherfucker like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not riding with a motherfucker like that. If you got motherfuckers like Caruso and KCP and uh, Montrez, if you got certain players like that that say, man, the motherfuckers are dysfunctional, I don't want to play for an organization like that. Think about what they're saying. You act, them players ain't really like high level players. And they're saying that I don't, those players are, you know what I'm saying? One motherfucking bad break from being out of the league or going to the G League. So for them to be like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to play with somebody who's supposed to be the best in the world. What is that really saying about the organization and LeBron James? See, we don't want to keep that 100. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to keep that 100. So, everybody got what they wanted. They got a Trevor Reza back. They got motherfucking Coach Fisdale coaching. Somebody other than Frank Vogel, but you get the same results. So, what is that telling me? There's another bad apple on the fucking roster. You know what I'm saying? Or a couple of them. They even talking about trading motherfucking... Uh, Russell Westbrook and motherfucking Anthony Davis. They trying to do a whole overhaul. But mind you, LeBron is the one who wanted Anthony Davis from the beginning. That's what I'm trying to tell everyone. Nigga, why do you want to trade a player in which you just won a bubble championship and a motherfucker who's been an all-pro, he was selected to the top 75 motherfucking best player in the motherfucking world. You know what I'm saying? Of the 75th anniversary team. Why would you want to trade that guy? Because of what? He's not living up to the expectations everyone had for them at the start of the season. You know what I'm saying? Nobody said nothing when they was motherfucking, uh, when they was winning in the bubble. Why nobody said nothing when he when they were in the bubble? Everybody thought they was going to win 100,000 championships. Just think about that, man. Come on, man. This nigga garbage as fuck. Anthony Davis been weak to me. Only because he's always been fragile and injury prone. Yes, he has skills and talent for his size. He doesn't know how to use them. He's just playing strictly off of his athletic ability. When that athletic ability is taken away from you, what are you going to do? He has more knee injuries, foot injuries, ankle injuries, shoulder injuries. He's a pretty banged up big man. So now what he needs to do is transfer his game to where he doesn't really have to work that hard and put that amount of pressure and torque on his muscles to get a bucket. He can face up from at least 15 feet away, knock down the jumper, post his guy up, just back to the basket. He's big and strong, agile, long, back to the basket, jump hook, right hook, up and unders, work on his Akeem footwork. See, he needs to work with another great big man. Like a Kevin Garnett and a Keem Elijah Wan, a Kareem Abdul Jabbar to shore up his post skills. If you don't have post skills, bro, you like you're useless. That's why I say my, these motherfuckers don't be having no post skills like that. Come on, man. The Lakers are damaged goods. Carmelo needs to get the fuck up out of there and go to a contender. He needs to go to a contender. In Atlanta, I mean they got Gallinari, but shit. You can trade Gallinari for Carmelo any day. I think motherfucking well, um <clears throat> I think that'd be best. You know, for Melo, he can go to an Atlanta, he can go to a motherfucking Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? He can go to the Warriors, even though, you know what I'm saying, those last two teams that I name is pretty much has their roster set, you know what I'm saying, and pretty comfortable where where they are. They might add a couple pieces, you know what I'm saying, during the uh motherfucking uh uh, what's the name? Uh, trading deadline or whatever. Um, so that he can go to what other teams? He can he can go back to the Knicks and shore up their roster. To be honest, he got, I think he can provide you know what I'm saying some relief for the Knicks. He can help the Knicks because I'm thinking about all playoff teams that's trying to elevate. Who has a chance? Denver. He can go back to Denver and help them. They have an Aaron Gordon right now, but shit, they would love to have a motherfucking Melo spotting up over there and doing his thing, going back to where it all started for him, helping that team reach the finals. You know what I'm saying? 
he can go to Utah. Even though they got Royce O'Neal and Bogdanovich, but Melo can come off the bench and do his thing with Jordan Clarkson. Him and Jordan Clarkson can do their thing. For real, for real. You feel me? Think about all the teams that he can go to. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just me. That's just me, man. You know, Chicago. Playoff team, the way it's looking. You know what I'm saying? He can, he can help teams who has championship aspirations, man. Because the Lakers don't have it. Everybody holding on to this Lakers dream. It's, it's This is all just for the show, man. For the money, publicity, the storylines. Everything is a storyline in the NBA. That's what creates buzz. It creates press. It creates attention. You know what I'm saying? It creates viewership. You feel me? That's all this shit is. The Lakers, they keep talking about the Lakers as if they're a great team, but they're not. They're not trying to get better. Dallas Mavericks just signed motherfucking former Warrior Marquise Chris, former Cav, former motherfucking Phoenix Suns. Marquise Chris, Dallas has gotten better in that signing, in my opinion. The Lakers needed a big, somebody who can protect the rim, somebody who can run the floor, somebody who who's high energy, somebody who's young. They passed on that, but they signed an older veteran from the G League and Isaiah Thomas. Good signing, but I think Isaiah Thomas can be playing for another team, a contender. You know what I'm saying? These players are old. They want to compete to play to win. They just don't want to be in a league. Just to be in a league to lose, that's not fun. To be on teams that's not trying to go nowhere or get better. I said Thomas and Carmelo Anthony need to go to contenders to try to get a ring. That's what it, that's their that should be their main focus is to win. I want a ring. I want to go to teams that's competitive, who's trying to get better. The Lakers are just signing guys. They don't have a good player development system. It's just bad to watch. A historic franchise be decimated, you know what I'm saying, and brought down to its lowest point. It's no fun watching that. Period, point blank. So that's my take on that, man. You know what I'm saying? The Lakers is just not good. Despite what anyone says, I don't care what nobody says, you're not keeping it a hundred, nigga. You're capping. Stop with the cap and ass shit, bro. They're not good. They're not going nowhere. They're not winning the championship. It should always be championship or bust with a Laker or Boston, any kind of one of those teams, Warriors, Miami, you know what I'm saying, San Antonio. If it's not championship, then it's bust. What are we doing here? You feel me? If, they, if these teams don't have that type of mentality, what are you doing it for? Championship of bus. Fuck making a playoff. Nigga, I want to win it all. Why can't we win it all? Why not? That's where I stand with that. On your way in, on your way out, make sure you hit them thumbs up, man. You feel me? Thumbs up, man. You know what I'm talking about? From the real one, man. Elizy. You know how we get down, man. You see that? You see what that is, man. You feel me? Yeah, you see what that is, man. The real Elizy, man. You feel me? Like, share, subscribe. Let's get it. I get back with y'all. Peace.